My name is John Harris. I'm the treasurer of the Hamilton section of the IEEE. I usually don't know how many people are coming. We sort of have a registration thing online. If you signed up, there's a sign-up sheet with your name on it. Just initial it if you would, please. If you didn't let me know you were coming, you can't have coffee. <laughs> I'm teasing. There's lots of coffee for everybody. Help yourself. Uh, sign the sheet with your name if you wish. Uh, we normally have a little bit of get-together, networking, people just saying hello, saying what they're doing. I heard a lot of you doing that, and then a lot of you shutting up and just sort of sitting in the corner with quietly. Whatever you want, that's fine. <coughs> our speaker tonight is Steve Jackson, one of our senior members from Brantford. Hamilton section goes from Oakville to Brantford to Niagara on the lake. Uh, covers a wide area, so we have trouble figuring out who's going to come from where and when. The topic tonight is Tesla's wireless power transmission. It's something that sort of got pushed away to the side. Uh, sort of like the aeronautical engineers, they figure a bumblebee can't fly, so they won't talk about it. Uh, most power engineers can't figure out how this stuff works, so they tend not to talk about it. Uh, Tesla was a great inventor. So-so businessman, he got ripped off a lot by the Westinghouses and the other people that had more business savvy than uh, technical smarts. But that's one of the prices of genius. And to speak about genius, <laughs> Steve Jackson. <laughs> source this project. Uh, Sterling Allen of Peswick has agreed to do that. So uh, we hope that a number of people in this room will jump in and, and join the open source project. Um, I think you're going to, I guarantee you, you're going to be surprised. You may be well, offended, you might be afraid of some of what I've got to say. It's, it's time that was said. Tesla's patents were 1900 and earlier, many of them. So this has been in the public domain for a very long time. But we don't know about it. We're not taught about it. And you might wonder why that is. I'm not sure why. <coughs> so Tesla said, uh, well, let me just start by saying this is the fan that shouldn't be turning. Because there's just a single wire. And uh, it might be multiple conductor, but you can look at the end and see there's a single conductor there. And so, and there's nothing tricky in the, in the wall, no batteries. And there's a single wire to that, too. So we don't have physics for this. So how has this happened? When proposals are put forward, physicists tend to come up and say, well, there's a flaw in mathematics, so that's the end of that. But the fence turning, and that's what matters to engineers. <laughs> engineers are applied scientists, aren't we? We're given science. We use the science we're given if we're not given it. So here we go. <coughs> Engineers are the ingenious ones. That was the original meaning. We're applied scientists. We're the responsible party when things go wrong. The PEO is not a union, it's a hammer. Right? <laughs> it was with a civil engineer in an airport. And Saying that my structure had fallen down, failed, and uh, a, a junior in his office had done it, and he said, "You know, I stamped those lines." <coughs> so that's who we are. We're different from physicists. Right? If you need the same tower put up, you don't call a physicist. Most of engineers. We're the left brain ones. Where does that come from? We apply the science we're given, as I said. Tonight we're going to discuss some new science, which was given a century ago and forgotten. So a system of electrical energy with 645576. You could say this is a radio patent. So here are the players. There's uh, Maxwell, James Clerk Maxwell. John David Jackson in the middle is the author of classical electrodynamics. That's the textbook that every PhD has to suffer through. 
afflicted with this thing. Very difficult questions, and it's the hurdle you have to pass. Uh, Constantine Mile from Germany, professor of electrical engineering, Tesla. This is us. You Why isn't my picture bigger? <laughs> <laughs> We're not anybody. Uh, I don't have a PhD, so if anybody needs to leave, you can go now. I'm just an engineer. Nikola Tesla, 1856. I guess maybe you might say his, he might say his life started the second time when he got to New York, 1884, age 28. <clears throat> education is a bit surprising. You can read a lot about Tesla and not, not get the education story correct. An elementary education in Croatia, that was fine. 1875, Austri uh, Austrian Polytechnic School in Graz, and a military scholarship. He lost the scholarship. Uh, he got in conflict with Professor Pesch about whether DC motors had to have armatures. Pesch said they do. <coughs> Tesla said, well, they maybe shouldn't. It was a D-Rex. So near the end of the third year, he stopped attending lectures and dropped out. So he didn't, he didn't finish, did he? 1880, when he was age 24, his uncles put together some money and helped him get to Prague. But he arrived too late to enroll in the university. Even if he had arrived early enough, he would not have been permitted to enroll he had no Greek and didn't speak or write Czech. He might have checked that out before he went to Prague. <laughs> <laughs> he spent most of his time in the library and in the People's Cafe. He did attend lectures in the university as an auditor and did not receive marks from the courses. Does this sound familiar? Who else never graduated after high school? Bill Gates. Some people think that we'd have better software if, if Gates had learned some discipline. At Harvard. <laughs> 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 so going on to 1891, Tesla's AIEE lecture. Now that's 120 years ago, isn't it? 1891. Um, and that's the predecessor organization of the IEEE. They only had two E's, they didn't have electronic. Um, so what Tesla said is awfully important. Again. There was no subject more captivating or more worthy of study than nature to understand this great mechanism to discover the forces which are active and the laws which govern them is the highest aim of the intellect of man. Nature has stored up in the universe infinite energy. The eternal recipient and transmitter of this infinite energy is the ether. The recognition of the existence of ether and the functions it performs is one of the most important results of modern scientific <coughs> research. Phenomena upon which we used to look as wonders baffling explanation, we now see in a different light. The spark of an induction coil, the glow of an incandescent lamp, manifestations of mechanical forces of currents and magnets are no longer beyond our grasp. We can explain and account for <coughs> unraveling the mysteries of the universe. Now he's not kidding. He says we're bathed in energy. He says the ether is energetic. And he was successful in tapping. Defending the conservation of energy. But Tesla was on the side of uh, over unity. That's awfully important. So, the ether. There are some very clever people, electrical engineers, EU professors, who believe the ether does exist. So, here's Sid Deutsch's books. He just uh, passed at age 92, a month ago, I think. On his website, there are a wonderful series of uh, papers and articles. He's a, a really rich intellect. He's well worth reading. These are they're caref careful arguments. They stand up to careful scrutiny by, by physicists. So, I mean, you can say there is an ether. You really can. I guess the next big thing that happened was the world's Columbian Exposition in 1893. Tesla and Westinghouse triumph over Edison and J.P. Morgan. That's a, a phenomenal ex 
expression of engineering and well, civil and electrical. Tesla received uh, honorary doctorships, doc <laughs> doctoral degrees from uh, Columbia University at age 38, 1894, and then a dozen more. So his degrees were all honorary after, after uh, his basic education. Then 1895, Niagara Falls Hydro. Tesla, as a boy, actually told his family that he would harness Niagara Falls. And a stupendous uh, civil engineering was done. Uh, just amazing work of tunneling you know, for the first time ever. The buildings. Tesla and Westinghouse, a perfect partnership. They were uh, under assault by J.P. Morgan and his crowd of robber barons. So, uh, testing House was almost their equal. Tesla is an engineer's engineer. I don't know how many people know this story. He designed everything and tested it in his mind. It is immaterial to me whether I run my machine in my mind or test it in my shop. The inventions I have conceived in this way have always worked. In 30 years, there's not been a single exception. My first electric motor, the vacuum, my wireless light, my turbine engine, and many other devices have all been developed in exactly this way. Does anybody know an engineer who works that way? Tesla was a monomaniac, of course. He had no life outside his, his science. 1895 was the fire. He did, lost everything. And Tesla, in the normal course of affairs, would have been there and he would have died. Um, he had in his laboratory a, a wonderful last set of cupboards that had all his historical instruments. And a few months before the fire, a museum curator was in and said, uh, you should give that to us. So we just safe keep it for you. Wouldn't it have been wonderful if, if Tesla had taken up that offer? So we had to start all over again. And the reason Tesla didn't have any friends is that he would say things like, he would measure inductance in centimeters. We know inductance is uh, mass length squared over charge squared, Halliday and Resnick says so. But I found this equation, inductance of a flat spiral coil, it is r squared over r, meaning centimeters. Maybe that's what Tesla was doing. But you'd think he'd explain it. <laughs> uh, remote control, 1897 patent. He demonstrated a radio control boat to the US military, believing that they would want such things for torpedoes and whatnot. The art of teleautomatics. There was uh, in 1898 a public demonstration as the square garden. These devices had innovative cohere in a series of logic gates. Radio remote control remained a novelty until the 1960s. <laughs> so there's the, the patent drafter. See the boat, the rudder. And the name down here of the witnesses was uh, George Scherf. So you can check that out and see who George Scherf turned out to be. Relative related to the Bush 41 and 43. Now let's just stop and think what Tesla had to work with. Brass, wood, glass, steel, carbon, tin, copper, cotton, tar, <coughs> leaves. <laughs> he didn't have any active devices. How could he have done what he did, working with so little? <coughs> 